Hello, this is National Master Spencer Feingold back at the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta with the Endgame class, Tuesday Endgame class. You can't have more fun than that, except great players of the past. I like that one more. Uh, there's already questions about some stupid move. It's, it's White's turn, if that's your question. Oh, yeah, they bad. both the hands went down. <laughs> so uh, here we're going to look at um, a nice set of games. All of them by the same player, even though it's not great players of the past. Weird, but sometimes it happens. They're all going to be games from the great Samuel Ryshevsky, who, um, American player, played for the U.S. and uh, was well known for his antics uh, at the board. You know, he would often, like, offer a draw, then you'd think about it, and you'd be like, all right. And he's like, I didn't offer a draw. You know, that was his style. <laughs> but some people thought that he, like, had dementia, so he actually forgot. Other people thought he's, like, cheating, you know, just making you think about a draw offer for some time and then waste your time. Um, but who knows the truth? Probably it's both is, is true. So we'll see some games that Ryshevsky played here. Uh, in this position, he has black, but it is white to play because white's queen's hanging, and white played the best move, king h2. Just kidding. <laughs> queen takes d3. And so it's a uh, it's a queen ending. Somebody's a pawn ahead, and that person's winning. And he could even win some more material. How did he do it? Yes. Queen e1. And then after queen f1. Queen takes. <laughs> okay, after king h2. Uh, queen takes a6. A5. You mean? Uh, I thought that said six. Yeah, a5. Yeah, queen takes a5. But you would lose a pawn in return, right? How would you lose a pawn in return? Queen d7 check. Yes. So Oliver crushed your variation. With the correct answer. Queen e1. King h2. Queen e5. Yes. Queen e5. Forking the king. Still the a pawn, I guess. But mostly the b pawn. We'll take that b pawn and protect our weak b pawn, right? Two pawns up. Really nice. And now you'd win this, but Ryshevsky didn't. Check. No, it's it's still tough, actually. But he does get to a point when it's not tough. This was a good move. Queen e5. It's really nice to centralize the queen, you guys. That's a really good idea, in case you're ever wondering. In a queen endgame like this. Check. Block. And down. Now here, Ryshevsky does make a small error. It's, I don't really care too much about it for the, the course of the lecture, but I thought I'd mention it. He goes for queen f4 question mark. He should play, as we'll see later, queen c1 check, followed by queen c3, which is a good move, or queen b2. But getting the queen on this diagonal is, is a pretty smart idea. Um, which he does do that later. We'll see that he, we repeat this position and he does that. But he goes for queen f4 here. But now actually... White could try to win a pawn. Any suggestions? Oh, I thought you were. Try? Yeah. What do you think? What did I tell you about that? It's not a musical instrument. <laughs> All right, he's always making nice with it. <laughs> Well, you gotta have some good options here for white. I think I'd guess the first move. Queen yeah. yeah, like what other move could you even be looking at here, really? If you're trying to win a pawn, you gotta start with your checks. It's the only check. Good start. Then he moved his king up. Queen what? C5, check. He'll block queen E5, right? Hey, you're trying to win a pawn, so you don't just guess checks. You know? Well, that could be the first move that you want to look at as a check, I agree. But after queen E5, you're gonna... What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What do you think? Queen E7? Queen E7, fork. Good suggestion, right? Fork the two hanging pawns, right? 
you know, queen e7, queen f7, even queen g7, all of these moves would have posed some problem for black to defend all the pawns, right? And it would have made it a little bit more difficult to win. It probably isn't even winning. Um, but, like I said, it doesn't matter too much because he does go for the check, right? And he does play queen e5, as predicted. Check here. Goes to the side. Check again. Then, like I had mentioned, they repeated this position. Well, you guys didn't notice, maybe, but this is the same position as before where he played queen f4. And I said that was a mistake because he could check and play queen to the seventh rank and cause more technical difficulties. But now he did do the check. And now queen b2 or c3 is good. So, But his queen's really well placed here. It protects the pawn. And, well, on b2 it protects this pawn. But here it touches this pawn too. So pretty nice square for the queen. It's tough to win these kinds of endgames. But he's got a lot of pawns. He's got five pawns. And you see that they, they, they fool around a lot here. Let's see. King h1. Here comes a check. And this is really important, because if I was watching two people rated like 1,500 play here, it would just be like they're both offering a draw and both agreeing to it at the same time, which is not the thing to do. Yeah, come on, Oliver. How many times do I have to tell you that, though? Seriously. A hundred times? He died a hundred times. Just talking about her. R.I.P. Queen e7. So here he didn't lose a pawn yet at all, right? He kept all his pawns. But his king is a problem, right? He would love to do this. Watch this. Bam. That'd be great. Right? He'd be really safe there. And he does sort of do that. Here we go. Yeah, they move around a lot. You gotta be really patient here. Up a couple pawns. Finally sets him up here. So he's got two pawns that are like weak, right? And he's just going to have his queen defend them both. Like here. Or here. All right, you have other options too. Like here, but it hangs the queen, so probably not there. There we go. Protects both the pawns. Really nice technique here. He takes his sweet time about it. Not in a big hurry. Right? See what I mean? Always repeat. I'm not sure why white didn't repeat there. It's a little weird, but hey, whatever. You know? He's just thinking with the queen here that you're not going to get your king over there. Which is true, I guess. But he plays a good idea. He goes for, um, he pushes the f-pawn here. Wait for it. She gets checked a little. There we go. Basically what this does is now his weak pawns are here and here. So he changed where the weak pawn is, so now he could change where his queen is. That's a good square for the queen right in the center, defending all the weak pawns. So now he can move around his king again. As long as he doesn't, like, on purpose get skewered, it should be safe. He goes for here. Okay, but I, I want to make sure I don't run, run through the part that's, like, critical, you know? So let's make be precise here. Good move coming up here, right here, queen e3. Great move. Solid square for the queen. He does a lot here. It covers this diagonal, which is the most important. So when he does put his king here, it's bueno snow checks. Right? See what I mean? Bueno snow checks. Also, here it defends this pawn. Right? Right, Christopher? Yeah. I'm supposed to say no. It doesn't really defend the pawn. Look, you could just check and take the pawn, right? You just gonna believe everything I say? Yes. So why didn't he take it? Why didn't play queen takes g5 here? Why? What? Do you know who's trying to win here? What? Yes. If queen takes g5 here, then queen one check, king h2, and queen g3 trade. Exactly. See, that's the right answer, Christopher. <laughs> he won't take the pawn, Will White, because after trading the queens, you resign. Just down a pawn for absolutely nothing. Go here, game over. So that's why the queen on e3 actually defends the pawn, because he's got check, check. Anywhere that can go to e1 to g3 is, uh, is, is defending the pawn, because you just can't take it. 
We are not going to take it. So, he goes for a great defense, though. Queen d5. Queen d5 is a nice defense here. Because what is black going to do to make progress? Mm. Got Pepsi sponsoring this uh, this video. Mm. Usually it's Coke, but... Any suggestions for black? How do you make progress? Trade the queens? So, uh, you're gonna do that by force? Or are you just gonna ask white nicely? Please, trade queens? Well, trading queens would be great. Black would win easily. White just resigns, but I don't think white's gonna do that. In fact, white last move didn't take a free pawn because he saw that the guy would trade queens so he's not going to let you trade queens unless you give him no choice any candidate moves for black yes f3 never play f3 so f3 would be it would be nice for black if white traded queens by playing queen takes white would lose right be down a pawn for nothing and a king and pawn and game so that's why after f3 the only reasonable move would be g takes f3 then what are you gonna do queen one check check me and after king g2 let's say queen g3 check bingo queen g3 check really nice this is the way for. This is the way to make progress. You make past pawns on the king side like this. Absolutely. F3. X clam. Good choice. Only way forward. He did play pawn takes. Again, if queen takes would lose without much question. Check. 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 Now it looks like white is going to lose out of hand. I mean, down two pawns. A past pawn now. Black's king's safe. And that sort of is the case. Nice. Going back to that diagonal, right? Ditches the pawn. This is nice. He checks him. So when you step up, he takes the pawn with check. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. Gets back on the diagonal. No check, right? Now a tricky move. G4. What do you guys think about that? Hanging the pawn? Why not, Oliver? I'm walking. Okay. That noisy computer again, huh? Shh, come on, quiet down. Make it a video. <laughs> because when the queen takes queen e1 check and the queen would take the a5 pawn. I mean, that would win, yeah. But he, for the record, he would play queen e1 check, queen g3 check. Still. Take, 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 take. I'll just bring my king around and take this pawn. I'm faster than you. We can count. The king's on g3. King b8, king f4, king c7, king e5, king c6. All right? Easy win. Oh, come on, turn off your phones for class. <laughs> it was, I now have to take your phone away. <laughs> That's what it would be like in school. I, oh, well, if it was a chess tournament, 10 minutes off your. <laughs> So that's why he didn't play queen takes pawn. But white does have a good defense here. So good that they immediately agreed to a draw after white's next move. Yes. Draw agreed. Yeah. Big mistake by Ryshevsky, right?
allowed the guy this trick. He totally missed that one. He was too busy calculating queen takes g4 and the king and pawn game, which wins. He forgot about queen f2. You gotta look at all of your opponent's forcing moves. This one threatens the queen. It's so funny that he can't even play queen b6. <laughs> can't even play queen b6. Too good. Yeah. Tough trick from Bryshevsky. Um He probably didn't like that one. His opponent, by the way, I don't know if I said this, Pilnik? Never heard of the guy. But he got this one trick on Ryshevsky. It's enough to get the draw. Oh, but can you show us maybe more, more explicit? Stalemate. Guess, yeah, I know, but I'm not seeing it exactly. Stalemate. Oh, okay, can you move? Okay, thank you. I just can't visualize. Classic I he had stalemate. To, I thought he had to bring the pawns in to help. <laughs> Black? Yeah. His queen's hanging, though. I see. No, I know. Yeah, that's why, like, queen b6 would be good if it didn't hang yeah. the queen. That, then it wouldn't be a draw, but... God, gotta love that one pawn there. And what year was this game? I mean, 1942. Okay, it's an older one. Yeah. Rysh Ryshevsky probably wasn't very old then, even. Although he's an old guy, but... <laughs> no, um, 42, he was probably still pretty young. So dang, you'd think that that never happened to him again, right? Oh. <laughs> well, you're in for a surprise. Alright. So here it's black to play, so white resigned. No. <laughs> I can't trick this kid anymore, huh? Sammy has white in this game against uh, one of my personal favorites, Efim Geller. Geller is definitely considered one of the best to never become world champion. He's one of those kinds of guys, you know, like Korchnoi and Kares. Geller's up there too. Um, Rubenstein. And Geller uh, here has black. He is in a hopeless endgame. Although it's pretty tricky. And work end games are tough to win, even if you are a couple pawns ahead. So Sammy still has his work cut out for him, especially against such a talented player. This was from uh, 53, 1953, Zurich Candidates. So, uh, goes for rook a8. Yeah, good move. Hits the a pawn, right? And um, Sammy plays b6. Let's say he goes for rook d3. Solid move. What do you think uh, Geller would play then after rook d3? Anyone? Um, rook A4? Which one? Rook C8? Uh, oh, you hate your C pawn? Rook 4, sorry. But if you move your rook, then I'll take this pawn. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't oh, think you want to lose that pawn. That's your best guy. Oh, yeah. You know, he's, he's your main cheerleader over here. He's the only guy keeping you alive, really. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Rook a5, interesting move. A5, That's definitely an interesting move. Mm -hmm. So I think he'd play rook b3 then, right? Then it would be like this, because I'm just going to push my pawn. <laughs> yeah. But you're on the right track with rook a5. It's just that rook b3 is the problem. So that's why if rook d3, Sammy didn't play that because he didn't want to see rook b8. Now, now you might say, well, hold on a minute. What about the same move? Rook b3, right. How would he handle rook b3 then? Rook d3, rook b8, rook b3, yes? Rook d8. Bingo. Bingo. Great move. Rook d8. See what I mean there, you guys? No. Let's see. Because I'm going in there for the game. That's game over. This is, that's winning for black. Rook d8 wins. Oh, yeah. I gave this variation. This is why Sammy played b6. Mm -hmm. Good move. Interesting. Uh, rook d3 is not bad. It's just after rook b8, you have to go back rook d5. If you want to keep that pawn. That's actually the only logical move is rook d5. Because mm -hmm. if you go here, that actually is losing to rook d8. Now white wins, or white loses, rather. Because rook d8 wins. Rook d1 wins, that is. 
I'll learn the colors one day. But, um, see, Arashevsky did a great job here figuring that out and just going B6, right? Really smart. Arashevsky knows what he's doing. For now. <laughs> For now. So, after B6, what do you think Galera should do? Rook B8. Still, an interesting candidate move. But I think there's a move that's more obvious than that. Take yeah, but those are your two candidate moves. You guys did a good job figuring that out so quickly. Those are the two moves to play. So why don't you think you could think about it for what, 60 seconds? Maybe we could take a vote. I like to do that. 60 seconds. You got two options. So 50 50, you know. Try to calculate some good options for Sammy. What do you think he's going to do? Which one poses more problems? Could even draw. Could. Rook and pawn in games could draw, even up a pawn or two. Especially that C2 pawn's pretty valuable, you know? Pretty, pretty valuable. All right, it seems like it's been about 60 seconds, right? Who says Rook takes A3? One and a half. Who says the other move, Rook B8? Three to one. Well, it looks like the three agree with Geller. Rook B8 was played. The wrong move. <laughs> Got him so good. I guess that was the best one yet. Yeah, Rook B8 was played, but it is the wrong move. Now, um, what's wrong with, what did, would you think is wrong with rook a3? Why would you reject that move? Rook b5. Rook b5? Well, then I'll just go back. Rook a8. And I cleaned up a clean pawn. b7. b7 is the tricky move. Right? If rook takes a3, b7, white's trying to check you, and then queen. So this would be a reason to reject rook a3, like Geller did. But let's take a deeper look at it. Rook a3, x clam, b7. Now we have to get behind the pawn. You've got two options, rook b3 or rook b4. One of them is good and one's not. <laughs> it's time for another one minute vote. So let's see if you guys can figure this one out. Which move will defend and which one needs to go to the dumpster? Dumpster. Yeah, throw it out. <laughs> not an easy one to understand. And I think that Geller didn't understand it. I think he was calculating this, but found the wrong move here. Yeah, what's wrong with rook, rook b3? Oh, I'm asking if rook b3 or rook b4, which one's better? Oh, which one, one of them draws, sort of, but one of them doesn't. Okay. One of them's acceptable, one of them's terrible. And I was going to do another one minute oh, vote. Okay. I didn't even hear those two choices, but now I can put together my thing. Alright, well, we can vote then. How, who says Rook B3? Two, and then Rook B4? The other two. Dang, pretty close. Ugh, rook B4, X Clam. Let's see why. It is pretty obvious why when you see the variation. Rook b3, you know what he's going to do, right? Check. And then only legal move, and then you know what he's going to do. Queen. And then takes, takes, right? What? The end. Resign, right? Yeah. Okay, now let's try the other one. Oh, sorry, I went too far there. Rook b4, same move, right? Same thing. But now we don't resign. Now we have a move to play. Yes? Rook d3, just like rook d8 earlier. How come you're the only one who sees that idea? You're the only one. Rook d3, now we have a threat. Now we've got a threat. In fact, this looks like white might even lose, right? This looks like white might even lose. No? What do you think? Rook b, b1. Rook b, b1. That gets it done, actually, right? That gets it done. 
play Rook and Four against Rook and Three. Yeah, you could just do it that way. I, I looked at this move to try to um, get Rook D1, Rook C8. That's what I was going for, but then the computer played Rook C3, and I was like, ah. Now I could go back to C1, but that's not going to help. So I thought I'd make Luft this way, but either way, we're getting Rook and Four against Rook and Three. He's queening, and then here we go. And I thought g4 was the best way to make Luft because, as everybody knows in this class, obviously, the best way to defend Rook and 3 against Rook and 4 is to get this setup for the 3. Right? You all know that? No? No. Maybe. Yeah, that's the best way. If you have Rook and 3 against Rook and 4, that's the setup you should try to achieve. So I thought that in this position, g4 would be the most testing try to avoid that setup. What do you mean by this setup? Putting the pawns here and here. And here, like that, setting up the the three pawns. You have rook and four against rook and three. Right. So the best way to set up your three pawns is as I, uh, as this diagram shows. You know, with uh, h5 g6, or if you have white, it would be h h4 g3 oh, so f2. The king can just sort of hide everything. Well, with so the what, what the deal is that you know if you have four against three, it, in order to make a pass pawn, uh, black is trying to make it so you um, you have to trade all the pawns. Okay. So the only way for white to make a pass pawn in that four against three, they'd go here, then there, then there, then there, and black just trades every time until it's rook and one against rook, which is a textbook draw. Okay. So that's that's the idea. Now that, that's with best case scenario, right? You know, we, white is going to try some weird stuff, mm -hmm. and black might mess up a little bit, but even still, you can defend it. But that's just like the the textbook setup to defend rook and four against rook and three. If black will set up the pawns like that. That's the way to go for it. Um, or white, like I said, white will set them up here if white has the three. Or if it's on the other side of the board, it'll be like this, you know, against these four. You get what I'm saying. Either, either side of the board. So this would be a draw. I mean, certainly. You know, rook and four against rook and three is a draw. He has, he'd have to work for it. But the fact of the matter is rook takes a three probably more or less forces a draw. If you use the right rook to go on the B file, like we saw. But instead he did play rook B8 the other candidate move that we had suggested. And I think it's because he didn't know which... He, maybe he calculated the wrong rook going to the, the B file there in that variation. Or maybe he didn't see rook d3 also. Um, or just didn't understand some part of it. It's all, anything like that is possible. But now he's in a bad way. He basically trades these pawns and is lost. He's down two pawns for nothing, right? And there's no forcing move uh, to do you know, to change the course of events here. It's just a lost uh, endgame. Good technique by Sammy here. He's like, give me that pawn. So now it's Rook and four against Rook and two, right? And Rook and four against Rook and two. So it's two extra pawns, textbook win. I'm sure Ryshevsky was already writing his victory speech at this point. I know I would be. He's like, let me get my king out of there, right? H4 there is trying to avoid some pawn trades maybe, but I don't know. Seems okay. Either way. Pretty solid, huh? Solid technique. Check. Yeah. But here, actually, Ryshevsky makes the... Uh, it's not losing, right? It's the drawing move, I guess. Allowing the draw. White to play. I was wondering if you guys could suggest some good moves. What do you think? Rook a5. Rook a5, get at that pawn, right? That move should win. Really. Already better than Ryshevsky. Dang. So young, too. But he would be afraid of the check, king f2. No, it seems like it should win. Because you're attacking the rook, so you can't play king g5. Did play like rook f6 or something? Did play rook f6. It's a little bit more complicated than that, because you'll notice that the king, actually, black's king, will be able to move. But yeah, he did keep some stalemate tricks available with rook f6. I think the easiest and most textbook move would be rook a8. Hey, doesn't that seem like the normal move? That's just like what a normal strong player would do, I think. Well, maybe they try to attack the F-pawn like he did. That makes sense, too. Check, but it hits the rook. 
something like this, king f3. Now if you take the pawn, you get mated in one. So you'd have to not take the pawn. Here's some check, right? But yeah, I like to rook g8. Not the only winning move there, but rook g8 seems like definitely is going to win now. For example, I tried some defense like this. Like, I'll keep checking you until you go to h2. Now I can't check you anymore. And white is going to win this pawn with rook g5 check. So probably you'll just take here, but I'll just check you and win the pawn anyway. You have to go back, the only legal move. They have to go here, only legal move. And now, obviously, is a win. No doubt about it. So, that would have been uh, the cleanest way. Maybe black did have some trickier defense, actually. But after rook f6, as we would expect, because, you know, I already talked about how it's a lot of stalemates here, he is going to get in some stalemate problem, is the black king. Well, it's not really a problem for black, but, you know. Here. Great move. Really good defense here. He just tries g3. It looks like it's about over, you know, because king g4, check, rook g5. So easy, right? But he's got options. Such as? Black to play here. See that arrow? It's white's move. Rook <laughs> a2 check. Mm -hmm. King g1, I guess. Did you force a draw? I don't, I don't know. Okay. What? Okay. Well, Geller begs to differ. Geller forced a draw in Endgame. Here, with Black. Did he play Rook? He did play Rook F3. Oh, 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 oh. I thought it was G. Rook G3 also is playable. In fact, they're very similar. He played Rook F3 first. Rook G3 is fine, by the way. So that after King E2, then he takes F3. I mean G3, rather. And it's um, a similar position. Like, you would have the same position, but this would be here. So he'd rather the white king on E2. Didn't really matter, actually. They're both a draw. But now we're in a, a Rook and Pawn game that's a textbook draw. Because uh, it's really easy to draw, actually, because the king is cut off. White's king is cut off. The only way for white to get his king out would be to trade the rooks. But then once I get my king here, it's an easy draw if you trade the rooks. It'll just be king and pawn against king, easy draw, with, uh, with the black king in front there. So this is a, a, fair, a fairly easy draw now. I mean, very easy, actually. I actually had a similar position and won it because I did do this. My opponent just didn't trade rooks. Then I walked my king up. It was still a draw, but you could you could win that. You could win rook and pawn against rook like that, where your opponent has to know some defense. But here, black doesn't have to know any defense. There's nothing that you even have to do. It's just pretty easy. Even though black's king is awful, all you have to do is nothing. See, nothing. Then eventually he'll push his pawn. Now his pawn is too far away from his king. So he just attacks his pawn, and they already agreed to a draw here. But they could have tried, he could have played rook f1. Because any other move makes no sense, right? The pawn's hanging. If you push the pawn, just go behind it and take it. So you should try rook f1. But then he'll just move his rook back, let's say, f, uh, a7, right? To go to f7. That seems like the easiest way. So now uh, I'm threatening to, move my, threatening to move my king here, right? where I'm just going to surround your pawn and win it, and your king is too far away. And there's not really anything you could seriously do about that. You could still try to cut my king off, but then I'll just repeat, right? So Ryshevsky just agreed to a draw there, you know, instead of playing rook, uh, rook f1 even. So tough there for Ryshevsky. He did have the win, but it was another stalemate trick. Another stalemate trick got him. Yeah, it's good. Come on, learn about stalemate, buddy. But that now that never happened to Ryshevsky again. <laughs> Except until the next game. <laughs> yeah. Ryshevsky here. This is sort of a middle game, so you're going to have to excuse me. But what are you going to do?
sort of the end of the middle game, <laughs> you know, so that's fair enough. Beginning of the end game, depends on your perspective, I suppose. So here, Ryshevsky has black against venerable American Larry Evans. Larry M Melvin Evans. It's his middle name, not even a joke. I kind of like that. And he has a Y in it, too? Melvin with a Y? Pretty badass name. Anyways, uh, Sammy does play the best move here. Really nice move, actually. Good positional move. Nothing to do with our uh, lecture at all, though. H5, love it. Just building. Really complicated position. Very double-edged. Black's up a pawn. White's got the bishop pair. Black's got a lot of initiative. Black's definitely better. But um, h5 is a nice, patient, building move. And uh, Sammy was a patient dude, you know, when he played. He liked to build. He didn't mind. You know? So, white to play. This is a very difficult position for white. There, there's just no other way to put it. He, he is um, tied down here on the king side. He's down a pawn, and black's got everything defended perfectly. I mean, look at black's setup. It's rock solid, right? The a6 pawn is defended. He got all the dark square stuff defended by the queen and knight. It's like beautiful harmony in the position here. So Evans goes for a disruptive move. Queen c8. I'll tell you it's a bad move. He should have played queen b1 doing absolutely nothing. It's just a, a random move. I mean, I guess it protects the pawn. I really don't understand the move, but what are you, what are you gonna do? So he goes for queen c8. And uh, Sammy plays a brilliant forcing move with black here. Any suggestions? Your knight's hanging. Too scared to say? You got a lot of right answers so far. You should be confident. Like, pew. That's how I'd raise my hand. Yes? Queen E6. Queen E6. What, what kind of a forcing move is that? <laughs> it looks okay. Defends the knight. But I, I gave you a hint that it was forcing. Knight E6. Knight E6. B. Oh, knight B6. Now you're talking. That is a forcing move. I was going to say, what's knight E6? Knight B6, threatening the queen. Totally playable. I mean, it's a forcing move, at least. Any other suggestions? I think knight b6, probably queen f8. Just thinking about it. Seems like the move you'd play. No other forcing moves could be found. No threats. Learn about threats. I'll kill you all. It's a threat. Come on. What? Nothing. It was an X clam. He threw down some X clams. You guys got to see these X clams. Rook D1. Counterattacking the bishop, right? Counterattack. You guys missed that one. He's got a loose, he's got two loose pieces. He got to attack them if I'm asking for forcing moves. He's got two bishops that are undefended. And a rook. He's got all sorts. Well, actually, it is defended. Huh? I missed that. <laughs> but rook d1, attacking the undefended bishop. That's the way to go. And uh, Evans, for his, uh, to his credit, played a tricky move, you know, sort of a desperado. You guys know about desperados, right? The knight's hanging and the bishop's hanging. So I'll sack the bishop. Then when you take my bishop, I'll take your knight. Because I was going to lose the bishop anyway. And I think, by the way, taking the bishop is the best move, the easiest way to win. Um, he played a more complicated way to win. Queen g5, totally fine. Give it a little dubious because it's a little tougher. But yeah, a takes, rook takes, followed by rook e1. Should just win the game outright. Honestly, the bishop's hanging. This is coming in, and this is still coming up next. And you're not going to take the knight, are you? I don't think you'll take the knight. Queen takes would force resignation. So, this would have been a pretty easy win. 
I couldn't find a reasonable move. But he goes here, this should still be winning too. Just a, a little tougher. Now mate is threatened on g2, right? So that's why white played. Queen c2? Queen c2 does defend mate, but it doesn't attack the knight anymore. No, you're not. If you take my rook, I mate you, remember? Okay. So I'll just take your bishop and you lost a bishop. What were you saying? G4? That's better than G3? G3. And G3, right? That's the move. And G4. Crazy. Played H5. Too. Yeah, G3. Oh, yeah, G3. You know, safe enough. The only reasonable move, actually. Still takes the bishop, but now he can take the knight because the queen's there to, to attack, you know, D7. So he's got it. But then he still has this move. Rook e1. Really nice move there. But Larry, it looks like... It looks terrible for white. You know, it looks really bad. He can't ever play g ticks f4. Uh, Rook e2 check would just be forced mate. And his bishop's hanging and his king's getting mated. And black's king is just safe as can be. You know? Black's... Oh, I kicked the camera there. Was okay. <laughs> well, black's king is as safe as, as can be, basically. So uh, he tries rook f7. Yeah, there we go. Tries it. Freebie. Give me that. Again, cats play g takes f. Rook e2 check will force mate. Rook e2 check followed by queen g2 mate. So you can't go for that. He instead just attacks the queen. Check. King h1. And then? Queen takes g3. And then Evans resigned. Next game. JK LOL. JK LOL. It looks like it's about to resign though, right? See, this kid's getting it. This kid is getting it. Damn. <laughs> That's right. He did it the other way though. Yeah, he's just gonna move his rook side to side and check up. Rook f8 also is a draw. Like every every like trick like that is a draw. Sammy just let anything like that happen. Like any any <laughs> any uh, sacrificing the queen and rook is gonna be a draw by stalemate again. All right, come on, Sammy. Go ask his corpse. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, that is a nice one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Larry Evans is pretty tricky. I don't know where Sam Rashevsky is buried. It's what Wikipedia is for. All right, he's still got a little bit of time. I wanted to show one more example, so that's great. I usually don't get to show all my examples, so I'm happy that I did get to this time. This one's really... This is a much higher level example, even. So already it's, like, so crazy beyond comprehension, right? <laughs> pretty much. Everything's getting pretty spicy all over the board. Both kings are in a questionable scenario. This is the game Beliovsky against Larry Christensen. Gotta get all these American grandmasters in here, you know? Gotta get all these American grand. And Larry must have played Sammy, right? They must have played. I mean, obviously Larry's a different generation, but... Yeah, Larry against Beliovsky. I'm looking up the year here, but I can't see it. 87. Reggio Emilia. I got all the info here. So, Beliovsky with white is a piece up. He's got an extra bishop for zero pawns. So that's usually enough to end the game. And then Beliovsky keeps going hard in the paint. Check this move out. Every move's like winning, by the way, but... Boom, shakalaka. So here's the deal. Like, the guy's queen is hanging, but he's going to go for perpetual check. Like, takes the pawn, and then check, 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 check. And then you, this other rook is pinning it down. 
So he's playing 91 check. 98 check, obviously. King, H6. But now he's got great idea here. Knight takes F7, F6. He can't keep checking as long as the queen's here to cover this. Right? See what I mean? Queen's covering it. So good move there. Knight takes F6. Does the rook G3. Okay. But then check this one out. Deflection. Is that what you're going to say? Maybe. Yeah. I was going to say queen takes F6. That's not as good because then the queen would defend the square. On F if white plays queen takes back, which he would, the white queen defends so I can move to the side. You can't play rook F3 check. So queen takes F7, if you play queen takes, then we do get all the checks, right? So Larry knows what he's up to. Larry's no joke. Larry's like, haha, I gotcha. Living like Larry. Classic sponge. But then here comes Balyovsky on the next level. Every move is like double X clam here. Rook d7 hanging his own queen. Wow. Oh, because of rook h7. Rook h7 mate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Rook h7 mate if queen takes queen. So Belyovsky's like, got him. Queen takes f6. Last gasp. Belyovsky, I mean, uh, Larry sees last try as queen takes f6 here. How did Belyovsky play it? What is? What's the draw? What, it's a forced draw now? Anyone? Dang. Too good. You're too good with it. Well, why not? Queen takes f6. Because Why is it a draw? Because rook h2 check. Yes, rook h2 check. That's why. Oliver, you, did you hear what he said? Queen takes rook h2. Why not rook g1? Then uh, you could play king takes and... Oh, no, no, wait, 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 I'm wrong. I thought you could escape this way, right? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, I can. I can go here. I go here. And then when you play rook check, I play rook takes. So your king or can go there. Push. No, not queen takes. Yeah, no. pawn push. Oh, pawn push. You got me. You got me. I was, yeah, you're right. Yeah, here, queen takes, and then you can play g5. You got me there. It's hard to argue with that. So that's why it has to be rook h2. This is what Belyovsky missed. He did take the queen. He has to play rook h7, double x clam. And then black escapes, black escapes uh, stalemate, and now it's just an easy win. It's not stalemate at all. The king can move to two squares. And if you, like we were saying earlier, if you check here, you can't check there. Because I'll take it. So this would just be an easy win. A queen against rook. But instead he did play queen takes f6, rook h2, draw agreed. Takes, check. He just goes here and here. And he got no way to avoid the check or stalemate. So great trick by Larry. It really, really got Belyovsky good there. And a lot of nice stalemates here. So watch out for those stalemates. Those forcing moves, right? Every move's a forcing move that they missed, basically. The, the funniest one, I think, was the first one with Queen F2. I'm sure he was, like, calculating Queen takes G4, and then it was Queen F2 all of a sudden. He's like, ah. And then he never learned. He just allowed it two more times, three more times. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed, please consider to like and subscribe to the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta's YouTube channel. See you next time. Thanks. Bye bye. Wee. <laughs> yeah, I keep kicking it. A little bobble there. It was too close. That's why. Get away, bad boys. Bad boys. <laughs>